Thank you all for attending our COVID-19 virtual health fair. We're so happy to have everyone here. We are the El Paso Health Education Awareness Team, EP Heat for short, and the presenters are medical students from Paul L. Foster School of Medicine right here in El Paso. My name is Sarah Mansour. My name is Bina Yarlagatta. I'm Emily McCall. And I'm Melissa Downey. And with us, we also have our Paula Foster School of Medicine faculty moderators, Drs. Ayubie and Dr. Farr, who will also help us answer your questions. So how this morning will proceed, we will have a panel discussion. Feel free to type your questions in the chat, and we'll have a lot of time for you to ask questions towards the end. A disclaimer is we're not endorsing any products or services and our presentation does not constitute medical advice. So please contact your health professionals for any specific advice as well as any exercise recommendations. So I wanted to briefly bring up some El Paso numbers to everyone. There was a holiday spike in December where there was 36,000 active cases at one point. And now there's around 8,000 cases. So the numbers are going down, and if they can go down from 36,000 to 8,000, they can definitely bring down even further. So let's keep doing our part for that. Now, what is coronavirus and what is an overview of everything? So COVID-19, CO for corona, V for virus, D for disease, and 2019 was where it was first found. So COVID-19 is the actual disease and SARS-CoV-2 is the strain that causes the disease of COVID-19. And basically coronaviruses are anything that cause upper respiratory tract illnesses like the common cold. So how does coronavirus spread? Well, it's through respiratory droplets. And so if anyone gets COVID-19 and has COVID-19, well, one way that it can spread is if you follow the upper tract here, it's someone breathes, coughs, sneezes, yells into the surrounding air. Those droplets are now in the air and this person breathes these droplets in. And now this person has COVID-19 and it's easily spread this way. Another way is that they breathe, cough, sneeze into any object surrounding them like a table, a phone, a computer. And then you proceed to touch that item now then, if you touch your face, your mouth, your eyes, your nose, any way around your face, you can then have those um, droplets into your body and then you can then have COVID-19. So it's very quick and easy to spread from person to person. And yes, it is surrounded out there that six feet distance is a healthy, safe space to be away from one another to avoid these respiratory droplets, but it can also spread further than that if someone sneezes, uh, without a mask and that spreads out further. So please be wary of that. Six feet is a minimum. We want to stay away from one another. And there has been animals that did have coronavirus, but as far as research goes, there aren't pets that do transmit the virus to us. So they do not spread it, but there is also no evidence that there's COVID spreading it or mosquito spreading it. So again, it's just spread from person to person through those respiratory droplets. And from this, we can see that coronavirus remains on surfaces for quite a while, such as the outside of your surgical mask. So that's why it's important to wash your hands if you're in contact with any surface outside of your home. And don't touch the outside of your mask. Touch it from the ear loops and put it directly on the bottom of your table so that you don't have any type of way you can touch the outside of your mask. Most community transmission is through droplets that is expelled from your mouth and noses. So this puts an emphasis on mask wearing. If you're going to be exposed to COVID-19, it's gonna be from going outside and mingling with work community without wearing a mask and in close proximity to one another, which is exactly what this slide shows us. Community transmission is where it's happening. So Emily, can you speak a little bit about preventing the spread of this disease? Absolutely. So staying home is the most important and easiest way to reduce the spread of the virus. So stay home if you can. But if you do have to leave your home, you need to wear a mask. If feasible, you can use socially distanced options like food delivery or pickup. There's some really good free options out there for this. All right. So I'm sure you've seen people wearing their mask incorrectly, but this doesn't work. You have to cover both your nose and your mouth and then have the mask tightly placed on your face. 
In fact, the most recent CDC recommendation is to wear two masks because there are more infectious types of the virus and we need to be as cautious as possible. All right. So if you are touching surfaces outside of your house, you must wash your hands. Uh, you need to wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water because the actual rubbing motion will dislodge the virus from your hands. So you can sing the happy birthday song or the we will rock you song or any song that makes sure you're doing the appropriate 20 seconds of hand washing. Um, if you can't immediately wash your hands, you need to use hand, signer, hand sanitizer um, with an alcohol concentration of between 60 and 90% um, and wash your hands right away as soon as possible. Um, there are other products out there that have been advertised, such as GB lights. However, these products have not been evaluated by the FDA to show that they can kill the virus. So good old hand washing is your best bet. All right, so these are the mask rules for El Paso. So please take a moment to read over them or take a picture if you like. All right, Sarah, can you tell us about the symptoms? Sure. So you may be asymptomatic, meaning that you have no symptoms, but you're still able to spread the virus to others. You may also have mild symptoms, which can be managed at home, while others may have severe symptoms and they have to be managed from the hospital. So as long as you're able to eat and hydrate, these mild symptoms can be treated and managed at home. However, if you experience chest pain or hard time breathing or feeling dizzy, or can't eat or drink because you cannot keep anything down, or if someone at home is getting confused, these are emergency symptoms and please call 911. Symptoms in children tend to be asymptomatic. They may have diarrhea and vomiting, but they're less likely to progress into severe disease. And that's why it's presumed to be fairly safe for children to go back to school as long as safety measures are being followed in school. So, there is a rare condition called systemic inflammatory syndrome that has occurred in few children and occurred several weeks after getting the virus and those children need to be managed in a hospital. If you're unsure, use the CDC self checker and we'll put these links in our description box. If you're having a fever, you can take an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory agent like acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Make sure to stay well hydrated, rest, self-isolate from the rest of your household. If you have a shared space like a bathroom, other individuals should clean the doorknobs and sink faucets before using them so that they don't get the virus. Now that we've spoken about the disease and symptoms and treatments, Fina, can you tell us and talk to us about how to get tested? Of course. The most accurate test is PCR, which is short for polymerase chain reaction. This is done on a sample collected from a deep nasal swab. It's uncomfortable, but you'll get a decent sample. Next, there is a rapid antigen test that's less sensitive than the PCR test, but it's very quick. This means that it's helpful if the result is positive, but negative result can be false. You might have heard of an antibody test, and that's a blood test to see if your body generated antibodies which are immune fighting proteins against the virus. Um, these actually take several weeks to show up, so that's why it's used to look for a previous infection. So um, this is the link to find testing locations. Um, be sure to look up the location before going for specific hours and if an appointment is needed, and um, we'll be posting this link in the description box as well. So if you're showing symptoms of COVID-19 or you've been exposed to someone, please get tested. So let me walk you through this example. Uh, so we have Ashley. Ashley was part of a gathering on day zero. She found out that one of the girls at lunch had COVID-19. So she got tested on day four and her test came back negative. So she went ahead and mingled with friends and family. However, on day 10, she started having symptoms and received a positive test. So that brings me to my point. If you're asymptomatic, wait seven to 10 days for a more accurate test. So Bina, are you saying that if I tested negative that I can't spend time with my family and friends? Well, you should really wait 10 days from the day of exposure. You may be asymptomatic and spread the disease unknowingly. Um, Alyssa, can you talk about the vaccine? Of course, Bina. 
So when our body encounters the actual virus, um, it generates an immune response based on the fact that the proteins on the surface of the virus are foreign to our body. So when our body fights it, sometimes its response is exaggerated and that can lead to the severe symptoms and then people need to get hospitalized. So the purpose of the vaccine is to introduce our bodies to a modified version of the virus so that our bodies are ready to fight off the actual virus. Um, and we would not develop severe symptoms. So currently the vaccines are mRNA, which is basically sim similar to the genetic material that makes up the virus, but this mRNA doesn't have the ability to cause the disease, nor can it integrate with your body. So when your body sees this mRNA, it'll generate an immune response to fight off the real virus. So some people get scared that this, genetic, this is genetic material. We wanna assure you that the body disposes of this genetic material and gets rid of it very quickly. So it doesn't have the capacity to integrate into your own body. Um, the material itself is not infectious or harmful um, to your body at all. And so if you look at this little picture, um, this is your little immune cell, the little blue purple guy on the bottom right. And so they are trained because they had the virus and the little um, capsular guys uh, are in the middle, there you go. They're a little scared because your body has posted a wanted sign because it's ready to fight the virus. All right, so these are currently the two vaccines being distributed in the US. Um, if you've heard of them, they're Pfizer and Moderna. So you'll need two doses regardless of which vaccine you get. Um, around 21 or 28 days apart, it just depends on which vaccine you get. And only after the second dose are they 95% effective. So you'll need two doses because the first dose only primes your body for their immune response, while the second dose really makes sure your body creates that immune response. So Emily, have you gotten the vaccine? I have. Um, I got the vaccine and my arm was sore for the first day. I took an anti-inflammatory agent like ibuprofen, which helped a lot. Um, you can also use a warm compress um, and that'll help you get over it in a couple of days. For the second dose, some people did experience mild flu-like symptoms, myself included. Um, they will pass, just stay hydrated and rested. Our own doctor at UVA felt very fatigued after her second dose and had to take ibuprofen as well. Awesome, thank you for sharing. So um, all vaccines need to go through all stages of clinical trials. And for these vaccines, um, all the lab studies, all the clinical trial stages, all the rigorous safety studies were all followed. Um, if anything, they set a precedence to deliver vaccines and medications faster to everyone. Um, the mRNA vaccine technology in this vaccine has been studied for years, which allowed for the accelerated timeframe without skipping any safety testing. And most individuals um, in these vaccine trials didn't get COVID-19. Um, and none of those who actually did got the virus uh, or did acquire this virus developed any severe symptoms. So this is because the immune system was successfully trained to fight off the virus, like the previous picture that I showed you. Um, so hopefully when everyone gets the vaccine, eventually COVID-19 will just be another common cold. All right, so why does everyone need a vaccine? Why not just give it to those who are high at risk? So with widespread vaccination, um, this will hopefully reduce the spread of the virus. So herd immunity will stop the spread of the virus. And so what is herd immunity? Um, let's say everyone's vulnerable to getting COVID-19. So no one's immune against it. So if you look at this first little red person in the middle, they're infected with COVID. Um, it can easily spread to all these people who are blue here. No one has immunity. So um, some of these people will pass or they'll pass away and others will have to deal with terrible complications and long lasting side effects. Um, I personally know a few people who are my own age or my age in their twenties, um, maybe early thirties who are dealing with tight uh, chest tightness and haven't regained their sense of taste or smell and um, they were infected with the virus months ago. So let's say we start uh, immunizing people. So people who uh, become immune with the vaccine uh, with that 95% um, protection after the second dose, um, these people will not pass away or not get um, horrible uh, infection from it and have severe symptoms. So if you see these little people in green, they are the ones who are starting to become immune to it. And although the virus is still spreading, it's not as prevalent as before. So there's more uh, protection. And as people begin to get more and more vaccinated in the bottom, there's a, a larger ring of protection, so less people are able to get infected with the virus. And so eventually the virus doesn't have any, anyone else left to infect, and then the infection is eventually uh, contained. 
So now Emily will discuss signing up for the vaccine. Of course, um, these are the links to sign up for the vaccine. They'll be placed in the chat below. Um, you will be placed on a wait list and you will be contacted once your appointment is available. Um, so individuals who are currently eligible to receive the vaccine include healthcare workers, first responders, individuals over 65, and those over 16 with chronic medical conditions. Um, children were not included in the initial vaccine trials, but now new trials um, will be enrolling children, so these recommendations will change in the future. All right, so these are variants uh, which are changed virus, um, and they appear to spread more easily and quickly than the baseline COVID-19 virus. This is why you need to double mask, wash your hands, and, um, and take safety uh, measures. We cannot emphasize the importance of this enough. Um, the vaccine has been shown to be effective against these new variants. However, more research is needed to confirm this. Well, um, we've talked about the virus, we've talked about getting tested, and we've talked about the vaccine. Alyssa, can you tell us a little bit about the mental health aspect of the pandemic? Sure. So this, the pandemic is taking a toll on our personal lives and our mental health. Increased rates of depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts have all been observed during the last year. And the loss of a steady schedule or steady income has also negatively impacted many individuals, especially the loss of a loved one um, due to COVID itself. All right, so how can we help ourselves? So just be aware of what you're feeling. Are you feeling anxious? Are you depressed? Are you lonely? Please make sure to reach out to your family, your friends, or call your healthcare professional if you have one. And actually, if you can go back, this is one of my favorite um, one of my favorite uh, quotes right here. So it's all it's okay if all you did today was exist, which is very true. Definitely listen to your body. And if, if you are not feeling up to anything, just go ahead and give yourself a break. All right, so just please take a second to take a picture of this slide. If you feel like hurting yourself or if you're experiencing abuse or know someone who is experiencing thoughts of harming themselves or harming others, please contact one of these numbers and ask for help. And actually the crisis text line is really awesome. All you have to do is text them and they should uh, place you in contact with a volunteer who's trained to um, take on situations if you feel like you're in need of talking to someone. All right, and just remember we're all in this together and you're not alone. And so um, what can we combat, do to combat all of this and all these scary thoughts? So make use of El Paso's beautiful weather and go outside for a walk. Um, I've been doing this the last few days and it's awesome. Uh, the weather's beautiful. My dog's very happy. He loves it. So it, it's a great way to bond with your dog and just relax and get away from everything. And also you can look up beginner online videos for a quick workout. Um, I've also done this and it's very important to get your body moving. Take it slow and follow your own pace. Um, even if you can just do five, 10 minutes, um, that's better than nothing. And it, it'll help you increase blood flow and all that good stuff. And then, so here are some other uh, ideas for online activities. Um, so you can do these with your friends, with your family members. Um, you can all cook at the same time. You can eat it to see if it came out well, if everyone liked it. You can do charades, um, website games. I did this with one of our green colleges here at Paul Foster. It was really fun. Um, so someone could just share their screen and you can all um, play a game together. And then you can also work out with one of the workouts you looked up and you can also watch Netflix. So someone can again share their screen and you can watch, um, you can have like a little Netflix party. And then you can also do arts and crafts. Um, I know Pinterest, if you look things up, just Google things. Um, a lot of websites have um, things you can do with just everyday appliances or everyday items at home. And also there's guided meditation. So this one, you don't need people necessarily, um, but it is nice to kind of have a little group and you can watch a video and someone will be talking you through meditation. It could even be just two minutes. And you can, okay, with that being said, so now that we've bombarded you all with all this information about COVID-19, let's take a few seconds to relax. So just together, let's focus on our breathing. So everyone just close your eyes. And now take a deep breath in, breathe in through your nose for one, two, three, and just hold it there for two seconds and release slowly through your mouth for four seconds. Just let your mind relax and let's repeat it for another time. 
in through your nose, two seconds, and release through your mouth. And you can also stretch, get up and walk around if you need to. And it's important to allow yourself a moment to breathe during these difficult times. And thank you so much for attending our virtual health education fair. Or if you have any additional questions, we have more resources on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can just look us up on either any of these platforms using these titles here. And thank you so much.